Now in this lecture, we'll discuss how to make use of the validation in React Hook 4. So it includes configuring the library for validation and displaying the error messages along with the respective input controls. As always, you could find rest of the React Hook form videos and recommended references along with GitHub repository of the demo project in video description and inside the first comment of this video. Let's start with displaying the validation error messages or feedbacks along with the respective form controls. For that, we can make use of form state return from use form hook. So while invoking the use form hook, we'll destructure the form state like this. Now inside this form state object, we have these much properties. For now, we're only interested in this errors property. It contains all of the errors, validation errors inside the form. Now using this errors object, let me show the validation error message of this mobile control. So here we have the input control for mobile. Just below the label, I will add this div. Inside that, we can show the validation error message because of this mobile input control. So here we go form state dot errors contains all of the validation errors inside the form. Now let's retrieve the validation error due to the control mobile like this. Now let's display the containing validation error message that we have passed to the register method here. Now I'm just elaborating on this optional chaining here. If this question mark is not there, you could see the error from the IDE. This property mobile inside this errors object is possibly undefined. This property mobile will not be there inside this errors object if there is no error because of this mobile input control. In that case, we are trying to read this message property from this undefined object. So that will throw an error. In order to avoid that, we have this optional chaining syntax. This message will be only read if this property is not undefined. If it is undefined, reading the property will be skipped and the whole expression will be evaluated to undefined. Fine. Now back to the form. Inside this fresh form, we already have two invalid input controls, customer name and mobile because of the applied required and length related validations. But even though as per the default configuration of the library, the validation process will only happen once we submit the form. For example, if we submit the form here, you could see the error message that we have passed within the div here. So by default, form validation occurs only after form submission. Now you can change that through use form parameter here, mode. For detailed explanation, let's check the API documentation. Inside the use form, you could see this option mode. So to this property mode, you can pass these much values on change, on blur, on submit, on text and all. So the default value of the mode will be on submit. Now if you change that into on change like this, here we have invoked the use form along with default values. Let me pass the mode as on change. Now let's reload the app. Now the form controls will be validated as we change the containing values. So if I enter values into these text boxes, the validation process will happen. See, as I have already mentioned, even though we have applied multiple validation rules to this specific control at a time, only one validation error will be shown. If you want to change that, you can make use of this property criteria mode. Let's check the API documentation to see the details criteria mode and we can pass these values first error when set first error only the first error from the each field will be gathered to gather all errors from the field we can pass all now if you want to see this in action you can go to this code sandbox example here gathering all of the errors from the form fields will help you to list the error messages like this in this project we'll stick with first error now the reason for updating the render count when we change the values inside these text boxes will be discussed later. Now once we provide a valid value into the control, the validation error will be gone. But if you inspect the control here, you could see an empty div like this because there is no error to be shown inside this div. To get rid of such empty divs conditionally, we could do this. First of all, we'll check whether we have an error due to the mobile control. If there is, then only we will show this div. So let me cut this div from here and pasting the same here. Back to the app, let's check the same. Let's inspect the control. 
see this time we don't have such an empty div now in order to style this error message here i'm gonna add a css class inside the global style sheet index.css so here it is error feedback now let's add the same to the div that we have added here class name is equal to error feedback fine now let's do the same for remaining controls first of all we have customer name now using the shortcut control d i will replace this mobile with customer name now let's do the same for this email control So this is how we show validation error messages along with the corresponding input field. By the way, don't worry about becoming too cluttered with these HTML elements. In next session, we'll put everything in order using reusable components. Now finally, we have to discuss few more configurations from the library to tweak the working of the validation process. So first of all, I will change the mode that we have passed to the use form as on submit, which is the default value. Now the validation process will only happen once we submit the form here like this. Now this property here, revalidate mode determines how we want to validate the form controls inside this invalid form. Inside the fresh form, when the mode is set to on submit here, the validation process only happens once we submit the form. But in an already submitted invalid form, Validation will be triggered when we change the values inside the containing form fields. It's because of this property, revalidate mode. The default value of this mode is on change. So inside this invalid form, the validation process will happen while we change the form data. Actually, that's the expected behavior. But if you change its value to on submit, the form validation will only happen once we submit the form again. Okay, so if we change this property revalidate to on submit, the first validation of this form is done during its first submission. Now the revalidation of this form won't happen while we change the field values. It only happens once we submit the form again. See, so that's how we can make use of this property revalidate mode. Now I will stick with the default value of the property on change. That's the expected behavior. Now let's reload the form. Now if I submit this fresh form, you can see that this mobile control is focused. It's because of this property here, should focus error. Its default value is true, should focus error. See, now what actually it does is, among the invalid input controls, the first invalid control as per the rendered order inside this component here will be focused. So that's why this mobile control is getting focused. Now inside this fresh form, if you pass a valid data to the control, now the focus will go to this customer name control here. See, because that's the first invalid control. So that's how this property should focus error works. Now the final property of this discussion is delay error. You can see the description here, it delays the error from appearing instantly. So this configuration delays the display of error state to the end user by the given number of milliseconds. So it would be helpful in reducing the frequency of retrieving the error object when we type character by character into this field like this. Now finally, I want to simplify this expression here. Are you familiar with destructuring nested properties from a JavaScript object? To explain the same, here we have the same project used for explaining JavaScript destructuring basics. Now, into this user object, I will add this property contact info assigned with another object like this. Now let's get rid of this and let's destructure this contact info. See, here we have destructured the nested object having these two properties, mobile and email. Now, in order to access the containing properties, we could do this contact info dot mobile or email. So here we have the value from the nested property mobile. That's what we exactly done in case of this error object from form state. First of all, the form state is destructured from the hook use form. 
and then we read the nested property errors like this. Now instead of doing this, we can directly destructure the nested property mobile. For that, we could do this. Inside the contact info, we have the property mobile. Now you can retrieve the value directly from the variable mobile. So actually here we are creating a new variable and its value is destructured from this nested object contact info. Here we are just providing the nested path of this property mobile. So this time there won't be a variable or object with the name contact info. This time we have a variable contact info assigned with this destructured object. But when we are doing this, here we are specifying the nested property path. If you want to destructure the contact info separately, you could pass it as like this. Now if you print the same, you could see the whole nested object. See? So that's how nested properties are destructured from JavaScript objects. Now we'll do the same for destructuring the nested property errors from this return object. From form state, we have to destructure errors like this. Now we can directly use the variable errors. In order to modify them all at once, I will select this first one here. Then I will use the shortcut Control Shift L. It's a similar shortcut like Control D so that it will select each of the occurrence of the same word. Now we can modify them all at once like this. Errors. In this video, we have learned how to show the validation error messages along with the respective form fields using the form state object errors. And we configure the validation process using the use form properties like mode, revalidate mode, criteria mode, should focus error and delay error. Now in next lecture, we'll be discussing how to enforce custom validations with React hook form.